Welcome back to Smith's Fishing Outdoors. And today, we're gonna be showing you what I like to use to catch crappies and bluegills in the early spring. It's a nice, like, eight inch bluegill. Whew. Get this guy unhooked, and we'll get right into talking. He ate that thing good. He ate that flu-flu. Bye-bye. Okay. And now, we're gonna get into talking about how I like to set up my flu-flus and slip you so what you need is a flu-flu. If you want a wedgie plastic or a gulp of live minnow on there, it's weighted slip bobbers because they cast way better. And they, I mean, a lot of people like to use this. If you don't know what this is, it's a spring bobber. You see that little spring on the back? You hook it on that there, and these are like, I use these for like three to two feet of water. I use this for like uh, three to four to five or six, whatever you want above that. And then we get into these little tiny bobbers. These are like adjustable. You hook them on to your line right there and there and they can adjust through the top of the line. Well, we're gonna get straight in to rigging up the rod. You, you can find these in little packages like this. We got little packages of these little slip knots. So first thing we're gonna do is you get your line, you poke it through the end of that right there. You gotta find it through the other side. And then what you're gonna do is you get this, you slide it off. You slide it up to whatever depth you want it to go to. And then what you're going to take that little plastic piece off of there. And then you tighten it. And it slides. You, if it slides too much, tighten it a little bit more. And that's how you put the slip knot on. Now, we're going to put the bead on. you got to have a bead. It keeps the slip knot from going through the bobber. You do not want that to happen. These ones, you got to have a good eye to get it through that little hole right there. I got good eyes, hopefully. Good. I got good eyes, hopefully, as I miss the hole. You get that little bead right there. You can find these in at like your tackle shop or something like that. And then the bobber. You take your bobber. A lot of people might think you put it through the bottom. No. You got to put it through the top. If you put it through the bottom, your bobber is just going to look crazy 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 slide it through come on there we go got the bobber through and you see if that bead wasn't there the slip knot would have been just going straight through that bobber so you do not want that to happen then you get your weight I got these uh, gremlin weights, these split shots, I think it's a bigger size, and I like to have this line, I put, I put this slip knot, I'm going to put it about a foot from the, yeah, about a foot from the bottom of the line, so you put that there, don't use your teeth, burn your teeth a little bit, you get your pliers, Grip it on. Grip it on just like that. Tighten it. As good as you can get it before it doesn't slip. You don't want your slip not to slip. Or, or not a slip out. Your weight. Then, I'm going to grab you. We got our flu flu right here. Really, these things work really, really, really well stick it through you can just tie your random knot whatever you tie and get it through there tie it on here I'll tie it on here and there we go we got our slip knot. 
our bead, our bobber, our weight, and our flu flu. And usually, depends on what weight, depends on what depth you're fishing. Usually, want the slip knot. I usually keep it about a foot or two because we usually fish like eh, three to four feet of water, and that have this about like that. As for rods and reels, I like to use 1,000 size reels with four pound test. And for rods, I like to use six foot or with my favorite rod, this 610 Elk River. This happens to be a walleye rod. It's a medium light, fast, really, really, really nice rod. What do you got? Fighter. Andy Gill. Andy He's Gill. Fighter. Wow. Beautiful bluegill. Beautiful, beautiful bluegills. No crappies yet, but we're getting these big, big, nice bluegills. Crushing that flu flu. We let these big bluegills go because you want to let them grow. Big bluegills, like the nine inchers, they have the most eggs and they produce the most eggs and make the most bluegills. So we always let these big, nice bluegills go. You can keep the eight inchers. Those taste best anyway. That one feels like a bluegill, just the way it's swimming. Oh, yeah. That's an eater. That is an eater side bluegill. Little beads on them. This is like maybe eight perfect, perfect eater bluegill. And I'm hungry. Oh. I saw this bite. You're getting hit. <laughs> this is just so fun when you pile in a school of big bluegills. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's a giant gill. Oh my goodness. We may have to get the measuring board. Get the on. measuring board for this one. Oh my goodness. Guys, I just got this big, pretty, pretty food. We got our measuring board here. Let's see what he measures. And yeah, he's kind of short, but he's nine and a half. Nose touching, nine and a half. Still. Really, really pretty bluegill. Let's get some pictures of this one. <laughs> get a release on him. There he goes. See my power. I, I literally landed in my power. Oh, 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 this, by the way, is fighting. Oh, yeah. There's another nice guy. It's probably eight and a quarter or something. Pretty, pretty, pretty gill. Pretty, pretty. I like that little purple right there. Yeah, really nice fish. Really nice fish. This one's gonna be yummy. Dad, what do you got? First crappie? Lift her up. There we go, crappie. Crappie. I just cast it, boom. Like, what is that? I don't know. Six, six, six inches from that brush pile. Six inches from that log right there. And I bet you I'm going to go down real fast. Like, these fish, all that sun was baking on that log, and they're just sitting there to be a little bit warmer right there. Like they're just, we got them should be right there. And I just got soft right here. Oh. Cut off my barn. Oh, you? Oh, pretty one. Pretty purple one. That is a nice, nice bluegill. Look at that. 
crunched it. Crunched it and munched it. I added a little wedgie plastic to this. You can, I mean, I use these for ice fishing most of the time, but I tip it on there and helps them eat it maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna eat this one. What did you get, Dad? What did you get? This blue flu and fly combo is pretty good. Catch crappies, catch everything, but mega gills too. Okay. That thing, I took that hook right to oh, the dome on that one. Goodness. It's a nice eight or nine, maybe. Measure him. Put him on the old bump board that we got for Christmas. Let's see what we got. I think he's going to be eight and, eight and a half. Eight and a half. That's going to be an eater. Perfect eater. Thanks. Nice. What do I got? A large head. Large head. I got a large head. That's why you ate it when I was reeling in. <laughs> Even large heads like them, I guess. Uh, not the target species, but we got them. I think this is going to end the show. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next adventure.